Okay, so we're back. This is test four of the official SAT exams, and this is the no calculator section, section three. Which of the following expressions is equal to zero for some value of x? Right, so we have these absolute value expressions. So we could try setting it equal to zero and see what we get. So absolute value of x minus one is equal to one. Uh, that seems possible. Right. Uh, we can also teach art it, of course, and solve out both uh, equations explicitly, and that equals negative one. So we add one, add one, x equals two. Uh, add one, add one, x equals zero. So the two solutions for this first one are two and zero. So if you plug in two, two minus one is one, minus one is zero. If you plug in zero, zero minus one is negative one, minus one. Uh, this one we would reject. But still, this one works, so a is valid. In the function above, b is a constant. If f of 6, this is x, and equals to 7, this is y, what is the value of f of negative 2? This is x. So uh, first step is let's plug in x and y. Of course, f of x, the whole thing, represents y. Uh, so 7 equals 3 halves x, which is 6, plus b. Now 6 over 2 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 7 equals 9 plus b, subtract 9, and we get negative 2 equals b. Okay, now we can rewrite our original function. 3 halves x, instead of plus b, now we can put negative 2 in. Okay, and at this point we want to find f of negative 2, so we plug in negative 2 for x. 3 over 2, negative 2, minus 2, negative 2 over 2 is negative 1, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Answer choice A. Okay, x over y equals 6, and x is equal to this. So first thing I would do is just plug this in for x here. So we get 4y plus 4, if I distribute, uh, over y equals 6. I can move the y over here diagonally, because it is a factor. And then I could subtract 4y, and this cancels. I get 4 equals 2y, divide by 2 on both sides, and I get 2 equals y. Choice A. And they're asking for y, always double check. Uh, what is f of minus 3x? So I just have to plug in minus 3x for x. Okay, and when I multiply that through, I get 6x plus 5, choice B. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Okay, so the first step is I would FOIL out. So 2x times 4x, that would give me 8x squared. Then inside is 4x. Outside is 2x, and last is 1. So 8x squared plus 6x plus 1. Then I have to remember I need to multiply through by 3, so that's 24x squared plus 18x plus 3. Which of the following must also be true? Okay, so here I have a binomial, put parentheses on it. Now I will cross multiply, so I get 7 quantity a minus b equals 3b, distribute the 7. 7a minus 7b equals 3b, add 7b, and I get 7a equals to 10b, and at this point, um, I will try to isolate a over b. So I move the b underneath, okay, remove it from here, and I move the 7 underneath here, remove it from here. Remember, factors can be moved diagonally, and I'll find the answer choice to be choice b. While preparing to run a marathon, Amelia created a training schedule in which the distance of her longest run every week increased by a constant amount. If Amelia's training schedule requires that her longest run in week four is a distance of eight miles, okay, so we can say in week four she did a distance of eight miles, okay, and in week 16 she did a distance of 26 miles. So these are kind of like inputs and outputs. Which of the following best describes the distance that the run changes? Okay. Uh, so it increases by half a mile each week. Notice that the units are a rate, miles per week. So that is generally going to be the slope that they're looking for. So we can find the slope of ours by doing a change in y over change in x. So change in y is 26 minus 8. Change in x is 16 minus 4. And 26 minus 8, if we take away 10 and add back 2, we get 16 and then 18. And dividing... Uh, subtract by 16 minus 4 is 12 
And then we could say this is 9 times 2 and 6 times 2. The 2's cancel. And then we could say this is 3 times 3, and this is 3 times 2. The 3's cancel. So we end up with 3 halves, also known as 1.5. Um, so I would choose answer choice D. Uh, it increases by 1.5 miles per week. Which of the following equation represents a line that is parallel to the line with this equation? So when we're looking for parallel, we want the same slope. So we want a slope of negative 3. So we could put each of these into y equals mx plus b form, but perhaps a different option would actually be to put this into the same form that we have down below. So we add 3x to both sides. We get 3x plus y. And all the slope information is contained on the side with the x and y. So now if I double th this through, I would get 6x plus 2y equals 8. And notice that a has the same uh, information on the left-hand side. Number 9. So we first we'll square both sides. x minus a equals, um, we have to square this, which means FOIL. Okay, so we get x squared minus 4x minus 4x, that's minus 8x, plus 16. Now we can minus the x. We get x squared minus 9x plus 16. Um, and a is equal to 2. So let's replace this with a minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. And we get x squared minus 9x e plus 18 equals 0. Now we have to factor this down. So difference. Uh, we'd have basically trinomial factory, same negative, so both negative, uh, 18, no, uh, 6 and 3 would work, right? And if you get stuck there, you could just list out the factors of 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. 3 and 6 are the only ones that combined up to 9. And so we t-chart, we get x equals 6, x equals 3, and so it looks like choice A would be the best. Uh, now, whenever we square both sides, we always want to check our solutions, make sure that they are legit. So we plug in square root of 6 minus a, and a again is 2, equals x, uh, x would be 6 uh, minus 4. So we get the square root of 4, which is 2, is equal to 6 minus 4, which is 2. So that works. Now we should also plug in the other value for x, which was 3. So we get square root of 3 minus 2 equals 3 minus 4. 3 minus 2 is 1, square root of which is 1. And 3 minus 1 is negative 1. Right, so here um, we see that we are going to have to reject the solution x equals 3 and choose therefore only x equals 6. Question 10. Right, so for this one, let's see. We have to divide equals 10. So the first thing is to move this t minus 5 up to here, t minus 5. We can move factors diagonally, right? And then we can distribute the 10. So we get 10t minus 50, t plus 5. And I can subtract t. I always start with the variables. So I get 9t, and then I add 50. Add 50, I get 55. Divide by 9 and that's going to be my value for t, 55 over 9. 